Hello friends, it's Megan Elizabeth, and you know what? Nate Hebner is here with us as well tonight, so he can say hi from over in the corner. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, we wanted to come live with you all tonight because we had some things that were, have really been on our hearts and on our minds, and um, we just wanted to offer a place of some fun and some creativity and maybe some tools and resources that can help you all out in a time where things may seem a little bit uncertain. Well, I shouldn't say maybe. They are. They're a little uncertain. And every single person out there is dealing with the uncertainty in a variety of different ways. There's no um, one emotion or one feeling or one right way to experience or um, go through this circumstance together. And we're very, very, very aware of that. Um, I have some friends that are annoyed with me because they feel like you're like living your dream life over there and we're completely freaking out. And I want to be able to offer as many tools and resources as we possibly can to just inspire creativity and encouragement. And if there's tools that we can offer, um, hey Roxanne, thanks for joining. Hey Deanna, so good to see you here. Hi girl. How are you, Wendy Jo? Oh, it's nice to see everybody popping in. Hi Sherry. So I very much am keenly aware of the complete unknowns. Um, I actually made a joke with my mom earlier today about Elsa from Frozen 2 singing Into the Unknown and not to spoil the whole movie, but the the bubble of people trapped in the enchanted forest basically in quarantine for, you know, 34 years. <laughs> um, whatever it was. Hey Carrie, it's so great to see you guys. Um, as you join in, just say hello. Comment, like, share, let us know that you're here. Let us know how you're feeling what you're up to, what this experience has been for you as we're experiencing this globally and something that's never been seen before. Um, something Nate and I have been doing during this time, we've been trying to really take advantage of it every way that we possibly can. Um, we've been deep into a business course, which maybe you saw me talk about yesterday, I did a Facebook Live, which is what brought this whole thing on to do this loop. Um, uh, we we tried to share some resources on you know scheduling your work schedule or your kids schedule um, having the non-negotiables in the house zones to try to help just give you a framework or a structure uh, during this time so tonight I wanted to have some fun I actually cut out some stuff with my cricket we're going to we're gonna play with the some cricket stuff already right one day and I already feel like it's 34 years I totally understand um, it's definitely an unknown time where we don't know what's happening um, with jobs we don't know what's happening with kids going back to school or staying home for the rest of the year um, you know we have I have been living this life you know, for many years and I just want to be able to encourage as many people as possible so as we've been going through and doing this course and it's affecting us I'm not gonna lie there's not like this isn't like a Megan's just putting on a positive shiny happy enjoy the moments and everything will be fine glow um, but there are ways that you can control your perspective and you can control your inner world and your inner mind and your inner spirit and spark creativity and ask yourself questions and kind of flip the script and go through the loop and we're going to talk about that just a little bit more tonight um hopefully not too long because I can tend to want to really go on and on um <laughs> Nate's like yeah right <laughs> so I just felt like in a time where everybody's kind of isolated and disconnected we're all going virtual more and more than ever I mean I've been virtual with you guys for the last 13 years before Facebook live even existed I've done you streams and all kinds of live streaming services uh, through Above Ruby Studio and, and by Megan Elizabeth and um, wanted to provide help with your cricket and scrapbooking and even just life coaching and, and business coaching. Um, I've done that successfully for the last 12 years online, staying at home. Yes, I work as a QVC host now, but I wanted to just create a place where we're going to connect virtually. We're going to give each other a big, huge virtual hug. Um, and have a place where we're going to grow in like a like-mindedness of, I don't, I want to say like positivity, like it's like this, I'm like looking at Nate, like I don't want to say positivity, like we're all just like these big like, oh my gosh, just put on blinders and pretend it's not happening and be joyful. But we have an opportunity to choose joy and creativity right now. I was going to say the same thing, we're choosing to make the best time that we possibly can of the situation. That we're right. Because everybody has life and circumstances that come and hit you out of nowhere, even in normal times. Even in normal times when we're not all going through this globally, 
Um, we all have times where things come and hit us, like last year with my health or losing my sister or whatever it would be. We have these times and circumstances that they come at us. And when those things happen, they can sort of derail us. You know, if we're looking at like success is like kind of coming along on a line and like some, you know, you're on like this little roller coaster and all of a sudden something happens and it's like you're being spiraled into a loop. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Because when we get spiraled into that life situation and circumstance happening, we can suddenly start to feel ourselves spiral downward out of control. And what can we do to kind of send the loop back upward the other direction? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. This is the first time in probably, uh, I don't know, 10 years where I feel like I have been given a tool or a resource to help me recognize that these loops are normal. These loops that I feel like I go through every couple months because we all have that like one voice that's like, you suck, you can't do this, who do you think you are? Oh my gosh, everything's spiraling out of control. You're not gonna have any money coming in. You're, you know, whatever the fears and the like, bahs that are like screaming at you are on like the one side. And then you have another voice on the other side that's like, I can do this. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna get in shape and I'm going to drink the water and I'm going to go to bed earlier or get up earlier and I'm going to do all the things and it's going to be great, right? Maybe you don't have as much of that voice as I do. I, I, tend to, I tend to go towards that voice, but trust me, Nate can attest to how many times. Go ahead, tell them in real life, how many times do I maybe go, ah, this sucks. I think we all do it daily, honestly. You know, we, we... Come closer, just so they can hear you. He's like sitting across the room. <laughs> no, we all do it daily. You know, all of us Yes. Uh, Sherry just said, I'd be lost if you weren't coming on. They shut down our business yesterday. I'm not used to home time. Our afternoon nap's normal. I took an afternoon nap today. We were actually joking because I was working and we were doing the class and I was getting everything set up for tonight. And I was like, babe, I'm so exhausted. And I like completely passed out. <laughs> And I like freaked out at like quarter of six and I was like, holy crap, like I got to make dinner. I got to whatever. And Nate's like, I'll do it. I'll get it. <laughs> we were like joking, like, what did you do with your downtime? Well, I waited on Megan hand and foot while she took naps during the day. <laughs> I did work on my car. You so did work on your car. We are working. I, we're not, I say that cavalierly. I don't mean it to sound any, I feel like I'm going to cough. I don't have anything wrong. I just felt like I was going to cough. There's a tickle. Um, I don't, I know that this is like an unknown, unusual circumstance or situation, but what I really want to challenge everybody with tonight, the purpose of that is to come out and look at the loop and the situation and the circumstance. And what does it look like to come from the situ situation and circumstance happening and spiraling and getting through it and coming, I don't know which way to go here, coming back out the other side to go forward, forward towards the future. And we are going to come out of this one way or another. Have you seen this, the saying, this too shall pass? It might pass like a kidney stone, but it's going to pass. Like, this can be painful, but it can also be a really beautiful and beneficial time. And it's really deciding for yourself which way you're going to go forward with it, which way you're going to whatever. And this is the first time I've seen a tool that was like, oh, it really spoke to me that I can say, okay, I can take a little bit of time to write down these few things. Now, not all of you are going to sit down and want to grab a notebook and go deep with yourself and light candles and do it some deep reflection. But Nate and I both found this tool to be incredibly beneficial to recognize and understand that loops are going to happen. And I hope to make it a little bit fun and creative for you tonight. We're going to do a scrapbook page. I made a cut file with the Cricut that I will share with everybody um, that you can do. And you can make it into something more fun. You can turn it into something that is just for you and your family right now. Having an option for scrapbooking and getting creative and being resourceful right now is what's really going to pull us together to get us through. So let's connect, let's go deep, let's have some fun together, um, and we'll get to making and I'll explain this little this little loop. What Before I do, Nate, did you have anything you wanted to say about the loop? Well, I just think it's very interesting when you really sit down and if you do find time to, to do it, like, it's it's pretty amazing. Right. You, know, you definitely got to put some thought into it, but you know, when, you, when you start coming back around to the top of the loop again, it's like, well, this is 
pretty cool. I can do all yes, these things. Yes, right. Well, and that's the thing. Like, we've all been through hard times and hard things. Maybe not on this scale, on this level, this globally. But the best way to, like, look to predict the future is by looking back at our past. So what are some hard things that you've already been through? What are some hard things that you've already come out on the other side of? Not that it was like I came out on the other side and everything was roses and wonderful, but you came out on the other side stronger and with a different perspective or a different appreciation or a deeper level of empathy or sympathy. Maybe there's some other understanding that came. You came out of it, you know, really hard, dark, deep ah, time for me was like going through divorce and then having Graydon by myself and losing jobs and incomes and moving across the country and all these different things that had happened and being in like crazy crazy situations those were pretty dark times and now here we are on the other side of that loop and I'm with the love of my life and I'm not saying that that's like a magic thing for every single person out there I'm just saying like that's one of my stories to say like yes there was a loop and a spiral and a like you suck you're never gonna find anybody you're never going to be good enough and like all the negative self-talk or all the negative talk from even outside sources you know what the ex said what this person said what this awful boss said or this mean friend said or and if they're mean they're probably not really a friend but you have them in your life right I think we all do so when we can't control things and the timing of the shutdown and when things are going to come back around or schools or anything else what are you controlling what are you controlling inside of yourself what are you consuming what are you feeding yourself with? And I know Nate kind of said, like, if you have the time, I would just challenge you to make the time. You don't have to take hours and hours and go crazy, crazy deep. But if you want to be a person that isn't just sitting there freaking out and feeling sorry for yourself in a time that really feels like it'd be easy to just binge watch, net, binge watch Netflix and eat all the snacks and we see all those memes going around. But I feel like if you're here with me now and you've been a part of Above Ruby Studio or by Megan Elizabeth or She Makes Club, like, that's not who you are. That's not all you want out of life. You were made for more and you know it, but you're freaked out and you're scared and you're not sure how to go forward. So that's what this tool, I think, is for. So we want to help you build strength. We want to help you get into a way to have positive headspace. We want to help you get into a place where you're creating that loop for yourself. And we just need to have that authentic, real, safe place, and we hope that we can be that for you here and even more so inside She Makes Club because we don't have all kinds of other outside sources coming at us. Um, we are making it, we're working faster than ever to make it possible that you can even get off of Facebook and just come to that website so that you don't have to be inundated with the feed and the news and the next meme and the next meme and you're going crazy inside of yourself. We want to have a, a place that you can just authentically connect and feel how you feel and find your tools and your resources to feel how you want to feel. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, so one of the things that we I, that I was kind of really hit with um, was a verse in Second Corinthians today, and I'm not going to do like a crazy big like Bible study, Bible reading, or anything like that. But there were a couple Bible verses that really had come to me today um, as we were talking about this loop. So I'm going to share that with you as we go, and I'm gonna I'm actually going to switch over to our loop view here. Let me see if I can make that happen. Hello, and we're gonna just make that go away. We'll put that there instead. So um, here's what the loop looks like or is represented. It's just that it's a loop. So when a situation or an event or a realization occurs and kind of halts and stops you in your tracks and you feel yourself starting to go just downward, you're going in a downward spiral pretty quickly. Um, Self-doubt, fears, um, negative talk, negative thinking, they start to kind of creep in and they kind of send you down more. And what, and what we our natural reaction, human nature reaction to that is we feed that, right? Like we feed what's easy sometimes. So it can become really easy to quickly like whoof on down the spiral. But instead of just continuing to feed all the self-doubts and all the fears, and this is where Second Corinthians came into mind. If you um, have a Bible or pull up Bible.com, you can go to Second Corinthians 10, 1 through 5. And the whole, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it talks about not waging war against flesh and blood but of spiritual things of strongholds and um 
like like a like a in your mind warfare, okay? And what what the Bible says is it it's just to cast out every argument and thought that is in disharmony with God, that isn't in the knowledge of God and who he is and who he made you to be. It says take every thought into captivity and into the obedience of God. And when it says something like that, to me, it's saying you have the power to take capture, like grab a hold of these thoughts that are going on in your brain, in the spiritual world and the spiritual warfare inside of you, grab it. And you have the ability to bring it into obedience, to bring it into submission, to turn towards the truth, to turn towards trust and to turn towards peace. So part of that um, spiral, when you're feeling yourself starting to go down, is reverse the interpretation. So when you're in this middle of this sucks, I don't have a job. What am I going to do? People are hoarding toilet paper. I can't even get toilet paper at the store right now. I can't whatever, 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 like fill in the blanks. We all have our stories. Okay. Even if you're loving this time, you still have your story. Even if you're absolutely in complete paralyzed fear, you can turn this around. Okay. So what are the ways that you can take whatever meaning you're giving to this event, to this story, to this time, to this situation in your life? What are the ways that you can pause it? And you need to write this down. Like I want to challenge you. Just pull out. You can. I'll, I'll have this available. You can print it out. You can write little notes um, underneath each step. But how can you capture that thought and reverse the meaning, the interpretation, the ugh you're giving it? Yep. It's, it's affecting everybody, Denise, and my heart goes out to you guys. Like, we're, I'm out of QVC. Nate's been out for a little while. His business is still going. Um, but there's things that are changing quickly, and it's like all of a sudden. So what are we going to do with it? All of a sudden, all the moms that are now homeschooling their kids that are like, this isn't normal. And I will, t I will say this. I actually saw somebody else post it. My friend Erin posted it today, and I was like, she's so right. This isn't even normal homeschooling. Isolation schooling is not homeschooling. <laughs> It isn't. You know, we are used to going out and being active and doing things, and the kids are going a little bit stir-crazy. But um, we're all in this together. Like, let's connect and let's build and let's decide where we're going on the other side of when this passes or through it while we're in it. And that's what this loop is. And this happens in life over and over. We go through these loops over and over and over. So to reverse that interpretation or just say, I'm capturing this, like I'm freaking out. This isn't saying like, I'm just going to think positive thoughts and I'm going to wish this all away. Like, no, that's crap. I don't believe in that. Like you've heard me say it a thousand times. You hear Tony Robbins even say it. It's not about looking at the garden and going, there is no weeds. There is no weeds and pretending that everything's fine. Meanwhile, the weeds are choking up everything that's beautiful and killing the garden. That's not what you do in real life. You can't just pretend positivity and beauty and happiness and it'll all be fine but you do have the power to choose what interpretation what meaning what perspective you're going to give it and flip that script and who you want to be so that's what's going to take us through the next few steps and this is where you're going to write a few things down even if you do not get through all of them I'm going to challenge you with just one in the scrapbook page um who do I not want to be this was like so huge for Nate and I when we watched this initial training we got permission to kind of use this in our own way. I kind of took my own spin on it. Um, if you want the actual success loop principle video originator, uh, go visit Dean Graziosi. That's where it came from. But we have permission to bring it to you guys in our own words, in our own way to help encourage our audience. Um, so who do I not want to be? Do like, I don't want to be the person that's sitting here completely paralyzed and freaking out and yelling at my kids. I don't think any of us necessarily want to be that person. But, like, I don't want to be the person that's, like, hoarding all the toilet paper so that people who really need it can't get it. I don't want to be the person that is completely melting down and just binge-watching Netflix and, like, numbing out to pretend that it's not really there or really happening. I don't want to be the person that's so consumed by the news and the conspiracy theories that like I can't function off of my sofa. So that's who I don't want to be. Now that's going to be different for each and every one of you. I know in the business side of like the success loop, I don't want to be the person that gave up on herself, that gave up on her dreams, that gave up on a way to bridge the gap of what I truly desire most 
to have my business be. And I have so many people telling me you're never going to have that. You're insane if you think you're going to homeschool your kids and work on QVC and be this creative craft person that's also like Tony Robbins and like does all these things. You're insane. And I refuse to give up on that because I think it's in me for a reason. I might not have all the answers or have it all bridged or tied in a pretty bow, but I refuse to be the person that gives up on that. So that's who I do not want to be. So I would encourage you to write a sentence or two about who you do not want to be. But then flip it. Who do you want to be? Well, I want to be a person who gives light and joy and encouragement and gives glory to God and helps point my family in a direction to be truly who they were made to be, to have purpose and joy and love and peace in their hearts and in their lives. Like, who do I want to be? Who do you want to be? And that's what this layout's going to be. Who do you want to be? Um, I know, Nate, one of the, you wrote a couple notes on the who you want to be. Well, this one's actually really simple for me. I just want to be someone that people look up to. Kids, my wife, you know, just someone. A to role model yeah. of positivity. And I know you, we had, like, a longer talk about that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> on the other side of it um we did this outside of this all happening <laughs> um but we just thought this is such a powerful thing like it was so powerful for us that i'm just hoping that it can help encourage okay you're already planning on finally catching up on all the things here at home and you've been putting off for lack of time yes that is like something so many people are doing and i'm like yes like take action in some way you know we can't Like, I heard this today, and I was like, oh, it's so true. We can't fix our economy, meaning financial, or our spiritual economy if we're not starting in our homes, in ourselves. We can't recover our economy if we're not working in our hearts and in our homes first. Then it'll go to our towns and our communities. Then it'll flood to our states, and that is when the nation and the world start becoming whole. Fix the economy in your heart and in your home first. We're given a gift to do that if you choose to take it. Now, it doesn't mean everything's fine. There's not going to be stress. There's not going to be worries. Not going to be, how am I going to figure this out? But resourcefulness in this time is way more important than your resources in this time. So connect. Get creative. Be with people who are going to encourage and inspire you. Don't feed yourself with what's going to drain you. Because we don't only have to worry about the economy of your bank account draining right now. You have to worry about the economy of your heart and soul right now. That's the truth. So are you going to drain it? Or are you going to be building into it and filling it up? And saving up and giving from a real, authentic, amazing place? That's the truth. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Cheryl. Um, So who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? And then the next question is who am I actually being? I don't know how well you guys can see this. But who am I actually being? So I may not want to be this. So I'm recognizing that. I know I'm not here where I want to be yet. And that's okay. You don't need to be where you want to be yet. We're all growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. So if you're already like, nope, I'm good. I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm exactly how I want to be. I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm worried for you a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say things that might not be all popular. But who am I really being? Who am I really being right now? Okay, I totally went to Target because I needed some things. It was Graydon's birthday. We needed milk. We needed a few things. And I freaked out. I called Nate all but in tears. Like, I panicked. I did. I had a mini panic attack inside of Target. And that's not normal for me. I love the Target place, you know, y'all. But, I mean, there was big, huge X's on the floor to, like, keep six six feet of distance and, like, marking it out all throughout the, st- marking it out all throughout the store and, like, People coming over the the speakerphone saying, you know, please remember, the, but, but like all these things, right? Like, oh my goodness. And the shelves were empty and like, it made me feel like a bad person or greedy to like take the last bag of frozen peas, frozen, what did I get? String beans. It was the last bag. Well, then you went into a panic. Like, I did. Uh, panic buy. I mean, you're like... Oh, maybe we just need these two. Maybe we need these two. Like, I don't know. I don't want to be that person. But it did. It put. It, it started, right? So I'm not going to be like, oh, just, like, turn that magic switch and it doesn't exist. Like, like, but we need, like, I needed to get on the phone with me. And I needed to be reminded of truth. I needed to be reminded of 
what else does this mean? I needed to be reminded of this is going to pass and we are taken care of and we are okay and what can we be thankful for right now? I needed that. And I hope that you, if you don't have that, you reach out to Nate or I because we will be that for you the best we possibly can. It doesn't mean we have all the answers. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean we don't have our fears and worries. It just means we want to go forward. So who am I actually being? Okay, so I had a panic attack. Okay, so I don't have all these things figured out or pieces together. But like, let's have a real reality check and really like level the ground here. And that's where the curve starts to flatten out of your loop. Who am I really being here? And that's where it starts to like flatten along the bottom. But then you can start say, asking yourself, okay, what's the worst possible outcome of all of this? Completely broke. What, like, what's the worst possible outcome? Like, I don't even, I like, I try not to even let myself think there, but in it, from the situation of when we did this for like the business side of things, the worst possible outcome is we don't have the house that we want. We don't have the kids doing some of the things that we want to provide for them. We, like, the worst possible outcome in some of these other areas isn't probably all that bad, but it's not what we want. It's not truly where we feel like we're not helping people in their lives. We're not able to give and build the homes that I feel like we're called to be building. That's the worst possible outcome for me. So if you already know what the worst possible outcome is, what's the exciting possibility future like what could it look like if you were able to start becoming who you want to be and you recognize who you're already being what's exciting about the future well eventually we're gonna all be back eventually we will be um enjoying eating out getting together with friends we probably are all going to have a little bit of a different appreciation for what our time is being occupied with we're probably already gonna I think if you don't already have some type of perspective of all the things that you were doing that maybe you didn't need to be doing maybe not I, I for me I that was a big one did you have a thought on that no. um what did you write you had some stuff about um the exciting possible future slash like what happens if you know what's the worst didn't you? The worst or the, or the coming both. out of? Both. Well, the worst is just not end up being who I was meant to be. Yeah. You know, or I guess I kind of already said that. that we could have had. Yeah, what could have we have done? Yeah, yeah, like the regrets of everything. Yeah. I knew you had some stuff there. So, um, once you can kind of like, look, and I'm not saying like spend hours and write a big, huge book on this. Like we just wrote a couple sentences each, like really looking at it and recognizing every single person in the history of ever goes through these loops in these times. But like, how quick are you going to make your loop be? And not that you can make the, you can shorten the loop here in what you're controlling in the outside world, but what's the loop going on in your heart, in your inner world, in your inner economy, in your inner home, in your inner life? Because I can tell you one thing that I've been encouraging every single mom out there that is freaking out about suddenly homeschooling their kids. What's way more important right now than math facts or that science lesson or that vocabulary grammar lesson, and I'm, I'm not pretending like those things aren't important. I want the absolute best for my kids academically. Um, but I'm also not so freaked out and consumed by the academic side that I forget their souls and their spirits. And guys, they're looking to us as the adults and as parents, as the role models. And we're all going to remember this time in history. Anybody that was alive when 9-11 happened, anybody that was alive when Kennedy was shot, anybody that you know, was alive during these big monumental world things happening, like we remember them. We remember where we were, what we felt, what, you know, all of it, it right? Brings, it brings it all back. <clears throat> What are our kids going to remember about us at that time? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Um, so that level of resourcefulness, they're going to model after in us. So what's going to take us to the next level? What are ways that we can get resourceful? I'm not saying go out and suddenly be the mom that's doing all the crafty projects with the kids. Like, I wish as crafty and creative as I am and as much as I love doing She Makes Club, listen to me. I am not the mom that's like, let's sit and play with glitter and Play-Doh. No. no. I'm not the Pinterest mom. 
I'm not. I love my kids. I love homeschooling them, but I'm like, get your butts outside and go entertain yourselves and find something to do. And they're resourceful in figuring that out. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't, I feel like sometimes people have the wrong idea because they're like, but that's what you do. No, 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 no. You're wrong. <laughs> You're so wrong. <laughs> I, I remember it saying, Benson came in even the other day and he's like, wait, why are you doing this without me? And I was like, because I don't like you very much right now. <laughs> I love you. I'm here for you, but I don't like you very much right now. Like we have those moments, you guys. I'm not even going to pretend. Okay. Like I'm not like, this isn't all. What? You just had an earthquake? Holy cannoli. Where's that at? Julie is out in Washington, I think. Yikes. Hope everything is okay. Holy moly. See? Like, situations and circumstances, they're going to happen all around us all the time. And she's like, I feel calm. <laughs> she's like, I feel calm. Oh, I felt very calm through all of this. Okay, wait, sorry. I might be reading this a little bit off. Okay. All right. Whew. So sorry, Julie. Okay. So what are then from that, the next action steps that you can be taking towards that resourcefulness? And that is what's going to build the momentum to get you forward towards your future. So if nothing else tonight, and everybody's going to be at a different stage in a different state, let's make a little scrapbook page that we can accomplish kind of quickly here that kind of reflects this loop is a little reminder of the loop. You can refer back to this video or, um, I will have, Oh, I might not have had the right setting on my Cricut for this. Oh boy. I didn't even try. I cut this out on my Cricut maker before going live. I think it's okay. I don't know what setting I used. <laughs> kind of did it in a hurry. So I'm hoping this is what we're going to have. So it's, it's a picture of a loop and it says, who do I most want to be? And you can write this in any way that you want. We're going to use this in a second. Um, actually, Nate, besides the letters, can you take out, take off the loop and everything and just take out the insides of the letters? Like, leave the letters on the board, but take out the... You want all this off? Yeah, take all that. The, and outside? Yeah, you got it. So as he's doing that, I'm going to set up a few other things. So I have a 12 by 12... I have my 12 by 12 cardstock here. It's kind of a light, light pink, almost cream color. Um, I did this in a green Swiss dot pattern. I don't know if you can see those Swiss dots, but it's kind of textured. Um, and then I cut out the words peace and trust. These were words that I cut out with the joy and some files that I have. And then I picked out a picture of us as a family um, because I want to have this physical reminder that I can look to and say, who do we want to be? Who do I want to be in this? Who are the kids going to remember me being? It's okay that they remember me being real. This isn't about faking positivity. This is not about that. Okay. This is about having that real moment, that real recognition and saying, okay, this is what I feel like. This is, this is who I'm being right now. I know who I don't want to be. All right. But who do I want to be? And what are the best possibilities for an outcome? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this for you guys. I'll leave it on a blog post over at By Megan Elizabeth so that you can have all these resources and, and, this, and this video to refer back to whenever it's convenient for you. Because I know not everybody's going to be able to sit here kind of the whole time that we're live. So Nate is pulling everything off the mat for me. Just the insides of the letters, babe, not each letter. Do, you have a hook? do I have a hook? I have a hook. Or a pick? A little pick work? Oh, yikes. Julie, let me know, okay, my friend? Um, do I have, oh, I have the paper here too. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a couple layers of black cardstock and the, um, it's a smaller picture that I chose. So I'm just going to show you how we're going to make it. Um, you know what, too? We're going into April and it's so, I find this really ironic. I feel like God knows, like God only knows here right now. I had set out our entire schedule for the, um, the 2020 She Makes calendar year. I'm going to take the rest of this piece of this green Swiss dot pattern. Um, 
and I laid out all of our content and what kits we're going to be using and all of the fun things. And for April, the theme, well, March's theme was faith, but the theme of April, and it sounds like we're all going to still be pretty much in our, in our bubbles in April. Um, I want to get this as even as possible, so then I'll go back to talking to you. The theme is fun. <laughs> the theme for April is, is fun. And it almost feels like, what is going on? But then I really was like, should I change it? You know, is like, is fun not an appropriate theme for She Makes Club for the month of April? And then I realized, like, no, God went before in this. When I set out this, this plan, <laughs> not that all of my plans are, you know, the absolute right thing here, but there was a reason. I just feel like there was a reason for this plan. So... I am going to keep with our theme for April and it's going to be on fun and we're going to have a couple extra videos since we will all be home a little bit more. So I would love to have you come on board and check out, oh that's not cut quite evenly, um, April fun and we're going to be creative and we're going to just have a place where we can check out and feed ourselves with positivity, feed ourselves with like-minded people who want to be creative, who want to help and serve each other, who want to pray for each other in the midst of the struggle. We're not going to have a fake positivity session, but we're going to um, be an authentic place of let's share in each other's stories, in each other's journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, and let's get creative on the other side of it. Okay, so what I did there was I took the... Uh, kind of what was left of the green Swiss dot. I matted the photo with black, did the Swiss dot, and then another mat of black. All right. Do you want those off? Oh, uh, yeah, you can take those off. All right. Thanks, Denise. Carrie, thank you so much. Uh, Carrie, I'm so thankful that you're here. And I'm so thankful that you're on the front line in all of this. I mean, that's the truth in the matter. Thank you so much. Carrie just said that she's a nurse. And she's tired. I'm sure she is. I, we do thank you. So I'm going to put the loop in. This loop is going to be a little just visual reminder. So when I do my scrapbook pages and some of my layouts, I don't always have them in my, um, yeah, thank you, in my scrapbook page. I, or in my scrapbook book, I sometimes leave them out as a visual reminder. And right now during times like this, I think when you can make something with your hands and you can write it, write it down and you can do that, it does something different in your brain. It activates other parts of your brain to get more resourceful, to think differently, to look differently. So that was kind of my my heart goal and challenge in doing this is like how can we utilize this to look at it differently to think a little bit differently to 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 trust in where we're where um this all is and you know i was really utilizing and thinking about different again bible verses during this time you know i said already about second corinthians um but another one that had come to mind is in the book of james and uh, James 1 talks about falling into various trials and circumstances and situations. And it says about um, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And I feel like we all have, like, these double-minded things that go on from time to time, like I was talking about at the beginning, where it's like, wow, all the bad, it's so, wow, blah, 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 blah. And, like, oh, there's a truth, and it's good, and we're going to be okay, and it's fine. And, like, we have this, like, internal battle. We have to consciously choose to set and fix our minds, bring our thoughts into captivity, and set our minds towards the truth. And anything that we can do to have some fun, some creativity, and some other things to help along that process, like that's what I feel like I'm all feeling all about, <laughs> just there for right now. Um, so if we can have some type of physical, visual, creative reminders, and maybe this isn't going to work for you. Maybe you're just like, I'm not in that place right now. That's okay. What can you make with a loop? What can you make right now to just, these are fun little images. 
This is fun little party type images of loops and swirls and this is the up and down in life that we all go through. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do? What are you gonna experience? Like just have some fun with the process, okay? So I did cut out the words who do I most want to be? Okay. So you might most want to be the person that is just like the carries of the world. Cause she's gotten these out this outpouring of love and it's not forgettable. Never thought it would be in these times. None of us did. But she has something right now that she's taking <laughs> her mind off of it. I think, oh, thank you, Carrie. She said, using it God-centered, it may continue to bless you and everyone's family. Yes. Like, bless, blessings in this time. We are considered an essential business, so there's a chance our guys can get called out for emergencies. We do a lot of work at big Walmart distribution centers and keep the electrical equipment up and going. Yeah. I mean, it's just, whew. Everyone, everyone. I don't think there's. It, I saw somebody post today, like, um, who has been affected by this, and I, I was like, my thought immediately was like, a shorter list is who's not affected by this. We are all affected by this, and what are we doing with it? Let's, let's make, let's create, let's set our intentions on where we want it to go, not consume with the media. And I would love to invite you guys into the she makes club now more than ever um i'm taking washi tape by the way i'm taking some washi tape and this is how i'm going to keep my words lined up um just going to press that down on there Oop. just so you know what i'm doing really quickly i hope this cardstock is strong enough it should be this is basil cardstock so there shouldn't be any issues with that but there has been cardstock that i've done this technique with where it was not a good idea not a good idea um, Nate's business is also, the company he works for is also considered an essential business, um, because they manufacture parts, uh, for automobiles and equipment. So what I'm going to do is, I need my, you have the spatula, babe? I'm going to take the spatula and peel this all off. Um, and this is just how I keep, I didn't used to do this. I used to peel every letter off and try to reline them up. And then I was like, why am I doing that? Why am I not using washi tape or some type of transfer tape like we use when we do vinyl? So I found washi tape works with most cardstocks. Um, not all. Some of them it'll separate the layers, but whatever. Um, Nate is home, but the business is still going, so he might be going back on Monday, but we'll see. We will see. There's obviously things changing every single day. Um, but in order to, I feel like I'm jumping around on my thoughts cause I'm like telling you one thing and saying something else. But I, what I was starting to say was, um, we're working really hard to finish the new She Makes membership side site. Um, we do have the site, a site up and going that has at like 500 some crazy hours of tutorials and videos and content to take your mind off things to create and make with that are um, there and available but um, we wanted to have a place that was off of Facebook we have we're using Facebook we love Facebook I'm thankful for Facebook we're here tonight utilizing it but sometimes we just need another place to go that we're not feeding into the fear and this is what happens with some basil cardstock you can see the layers of it, of the cardstock itself separate. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. It doesn't always happen, but it's fine. We'll make it still work. So now I'm just going to um, put my adhesive on here. And this can just stand as, you know, have everybody in the house do one. What do I most want to be? Who do I most want to be? How do I want this to come out on the other side? For me, for our family. How am I feeding into our heart economy, our mind economy, our physical well-being? It's not easy, right? All right. Now I'm just going to place this down, and I'm going to let the adhesive dry for a second, all right, so that my letters stay stuck before I peel up the washi tape. 
This doesn't always work. It does not work well with inex with cheap uh, cardstock. If you're using not well-made cardstock, the layers will separate. And you're going to see this one T, the layers separated. The fibers of the layers of the cardstock will separate. It's bizarre, but you still end up with a pretty decent result most of the time. You don't want to press the car uh, washi tape down too hard either. Who do I most want to be? I'm going to let that dry. And then this is where you can take, if you want to take a ruler for your journaling, you can. I th seriously figured I would do it this way. Um, I was just going to take my ruler and go across with my U-Brand pen, one of my favorite pens, and just do some journaling lines. So you can do as many or as few of these as you want. You can actually have the Cricut do these for you. Um, I like to do these once in a while when I'm doing, when I want to do a lot of journaling on a page and I want it to be front and center. You guys know, if you saw my Tuesday tutorial earlier today, I did a scrapbook page that had a ton of hidden journaling. Um, and this might be kind of vulnerable. You might not want the world to see it, but this is a reminder for you in this time. Okay. So there's a couple journal lines that I can fill in. Who do I most want to be right now? Hey, Debbie. All right. Well, this should be pretty dry that if I start peeling back, and you can see some of the layers are peeling off. It's so weird. It's fine for the most part, but... It's pretty much intact, so I'm not too worried about it. Who do I most? Want to be. And I want to have trust and peace be on here. Because these words are visual again visual reminders where we're going where we want to be what we want to focus in on doesn't mean it's we're all there doesn't mean it's all figured out doesn't mean doesn't have to mean anything other than you're setting your intention because where your focus and attention intentions go energy flows and that's what you get good at <laughs> that's what you get better at Nate you're kind of learning that quickly this week aren't you like kind of getting that concept more than ever in your life were you listening yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm sitting here i'm listening <laughs> not um this week as we've been doing you've been home and things have been different and we're we're going forward and we're okay and we're having moments of like this is great and we're having moments of freak out um where the energy and intention is flowing what's happening like you you've been getting that concept more than ever of what we're focused on we're getting back very true yes so i'm gonna have peace come up here because i feel like trust is the way to peace all right so this is our little visual reminder so who do i most want to be i'm gonna write it in I feel like I can't write and speak at the same time. <laughs> Someone who inspires the world to creatively take action in their lives. To have a happy home filled with love and joy and peace. Giving honor 
add to God for who he created us to be. Um, living in full grace and truth. Okay, that's kind of where I'm going to go with that. And you can fill in as much or as little as you want. Do I have enough toilet paper? Um, it ain't pretty up there. I am not going to lie, but you know, we'll manage. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna, of all the things, like, I don't understand. Of all the things, it's not one I get. It's not one I get. You know, I guess this could be how you roll with the toilet paper. Ooh, we should do, we should do for next month, for next month, for our fun, creative, one of our videos, Inside She Makes Club, we're going to do a, this is how we roll layout. That's what we're going to do. It just came to me. This is how we roll. I need to write that down. Help me. <laughs> this is how we roll. We're going to do that. Do you have a pen? I, don't, I have pens everywhere. I can't find what I want right now. Ah! Panicking. I don't need a pen. I need something to write it on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it on here. You got it? It's fine. It's totally fine. We're going to do it on here. I'm going to do a this is how we roll layout. So if you want to be part of this is how we roll, we're going to have fun with that. So like I said, April is about fun. I'm not going to pretend that everything's rainbows and lollipops and always going to be fun. That's not what I'm going to do. But we're going to focus on some fun for the month of April. We're all still going to be in this together. All right. So we're going to do some this is how we roll. And I'm going to have some other fun things. Actually, my... I have a couple um, scrapbook kits that I was going to be working with and featuring. Um, one is a coffee kit and one is I love scrapbooking and creativity. Um, so we were going to have some fun with a little bit of both of those. I'm going to switch this view back. Um, that's my layout for today. Uh, la la la. This one. Hi. Um, oh my goodness. Yes, God, we are listening. So a large earthquake just hit Montana, too. My big printer I've had forever finally gave up. So I'm having it replaced. They ran across a great deal. It would be 12 by 12 pages. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> we can try the toilet paper cutting on the Cricut Joy. Uh, light it up, light it up. Okay. Well, you know what? No matter what, I still believe that God is 1,000% in control of all of this. Okay? We have a responsibility. Um, Ephesians 4 says about renewing our minds. Like, we have the responsibility to take control of what's going on in our hearts and in our minds. We were not given a spirit of fear. We were given a spirit of a sound mind to love. To love. And that's what we need to be doing right now. We need to be uh, coming together, connecting tuning out some of the news, listening to what God has for us, listening to how we can love and connect and take part with each other in this. We're all in this. We're all in this. So what are we going to do with it? Are we going to feed the news and feed the fear and feed the worry? Or are we going to take a look Sometimes it's not easy look, but are we going to take a look at ourselves and say, who am I being and who do I want to be? Where am I going to go? Are we going to just continue to spiral downward? Is this loop, instead of going back up, is it just going to be we're going down further and further and further? Or are we going to have it that, hey, no, we're going up and we're going to have times. I kind of did that upside down for how I wanted the loop to be represented now that I look at it, but I don't think it would have looked right on the scrapbook page. We want to be coming out on the high. Yes, Deb Debbie's been doing her daily threes again. Um, there is a daily three download printable available at by Megan Elizabeth right now. No, he's not done with us yet. He's doing something mighty. He has his hand in all of this. This isn't above him. This isn't a surprise to him. We were here and are made for such a time as this. Like, without a doubt. Without any doubt in my mind. Okay? So, I... 
want you to be able to have fun. I want you to be able to connect with us. I want you to be able to know that we're real people and struggling and feeling it just like you, but we're choosing the best we can every single moment of the day. Who does God want us to be? How are we taking our thoughts captive? How are we turning them over in truth? How are we solidifying our minds? Not being double and un double minded and unstable and gone back and forth with everything that crashes over us. No, we're solidified. We're focused on, yep, we're going to have a circumstance and a dip, but we're going to keep going up and forward. We're going to keep going up and forward. If you have any prayer requests, if you have any thoughts, if you have any concerns in your heart, in your life tonight, please message us. Let us know. We've gotten a lot of private messages. That seems to be the way that our followers roll the most is some private messages. We want to have some fun with you. We want to have a little bit of a distraction. We want to get you away from the news feeds as much as we can to just encourage truth and light into your life, some joy. Um, I feel a little emotional right now. <laughs> to make pretty things. To tell our stories. This is never going to be forgotten, you guys. So do we want to, we can do a this is how we roll and make it a little fun and a little bit creative and crazy. But do we want to focus in on a scrapbook page about the fear? Are we going to tell the story? And like, who are our kids going to see? What is the role model we are going to give them? Are they going to see Jesus? Are they going to see fear? And torment? We've been talking to our kids a lot about reaping what you sow. And what that actually looks like. And when you are sowing fear and anger and discouragement and defeat... Guess what you're going to get more of? You can't go out to your garden and plant tomato seeds and expect to get corn. <laughs> you can't do it. So you can't go out into the world planting fear and planting worry and planting scarcity and get abundance. So what are we going to do? Who do I most want to be? How can we grow together? How can we encourage each other? How can we get off of Facebook once in a while? I know we're here right now and we're utilizing this platform, but I'd love to invite you over to come to the She Makes platform. We're trying to get the full working website. There's stuff there. It's been there for a while, but we've been working hard along with Sasha to get, get it to be a place where you can just go and log in and not, not be distracted by the feed, not be distracted by the news. Just come and make. <laughs> just come and be encouraged. Just come and have some cricket files to cut out. Um, oh, we can totally create some kind of something on Design Space, Debbie. We're, we'll do something. We will. All right, guys. Uh, I love you all a ton. I am going to sign off for the evening. We are right at one hour. So, yay. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. He's like, are you going to go on for hours? I said, I want to stay under one hour. We're at right, right at one hour. But I wanted, I wanted to give you guys as much encouragement. And this was such a valuable tool to me when I saw this. I made, it made a light bulb go off in my brain. Like, oh, I understand why I loop. I understand my loops. But let's turn them off sooner. Let's flip the script. Reverse the interpretation and the meaning. And let's go back upward, forward towards the future. Who do I want to be? Who am I going to be through this? Who am I right now? It doesn't mean I'm already there. But it's a it's like a, it's like a written contract to yourself, a reminder to go forward. And we're doing it. So I hope that you do too. If there's any questions, any concerns, any anything, let me know. Enjoy the moments, you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.